This is LXPN TV, and I'm Colin O'Keefe. SEC Chairwoman Mary Shapiro is stepping down after four years at the commission. Joining me now to discuss her legacy and what this means going forward is David Smith of Brooks Pierce and his blog, Katie Bar the Door. David, first, what are your thoughts on Shapiro's legacy as she departs the SEC? Well, uh, Colin, I think an important thing to note, and it's easy to um, maybe easy to forget at this point, is that in 2009, when Chairman Shapiro took over, it, it wasn't necessarily foreseeable that the SEC was going to exist for very long. You know, Chairman Shapiro saw the agency through that. And, and today, I think it is in a much stronger position. Um, she has had a, a pretty strong record in her, her term as, as chair. The uh, the whistleblower program that was obviously mandated by, by Dodd-Frank but had to be implemented by the SEC is structurally sound. It's only made one award at this point, but it is in position, I think, once uh, once cases get past, get aged enough um, to generate some significant enforcement actions and uh, pay potential whistleblowers a significant amount of money for, for information leading to those actions. The TCR database exists. That's the, the database of tips, complaints, and referrals that um, about potential federal securities law violations. The Consolidated Audit Trail, which was passed earlier this year, which will enable enable the, the SEC to track securities trades you know, much more closely than they ever have been, will be in place in w within a couple of years. And, you know, maybe most significantly, the Enforcement Division has been revamped so that it is a more, uh, a more fearsome law enforcement group than it was, than, than, it, than it had been. Um, you know, she's had, she has had some struggles that she did not, uh, she did not achieve self-funding for the agency like as she had hoped, but she did secure budget increases in a, in a, an obviously severe environment. Um, she wasn't able to achieve the money market fund reform that she'd hoped for. Um, and there's been an, uh, the SEC has received a lot of criticism for for failing to charge or secure verdicts against individuals in these financial crisis cases. But you know that's uh, the, the the same charge you know might be leveled against the Justice Department or the New York State Attorney General's office as well. It's very tough to make those cases um, when you're talking about behavior that basically everybody in the industry was engaging in. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, she took over what was a difficult situation at the time, and in a lot of aspects, you know, made the best out of it. So, second, what does this mean for the Securities and Exchange Commission going forward? Do you have any thoughts on Elise Walter, who will be taking over uh, Shapiro's role as chairwoman? Sure. Uh, you know, there are a lot of issues still on the table. I think high-frequency trading is something that the, the agency really hasn't quite gotten its hands around yet. Um, probably a significant contributor to the flash crash in, in May of 2009 and to the troubles with Knight Capital earlier this year. I think money market fund reform is probably hasn't gone away entirely. There are uh, lots of uh, rules to be completed uh, to implement Dodd-Frank fully. There's rulemaking to implement after the Jobs Act. Um, you know, there uh, the, the SEC has gotten beaten up a, a little bit recently by the the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit for insufficient cost-benefit analyses in in its in some of its rulemakings. Um, so there's a lot to do. I, I think Elise Walter is going to be in a very good position to uh, to continue Shapiro's work. They they have you know remarkably similar backgrounds in, in that. Um, you know, uh, Commissioner Walter was a general counsel of uh, at the CFTC before she was at FINRA, and she was at FINRA with Chairman Shapiro, and she uh, she was the deputy director in the Corporation Finance Division at the SEC before that. She's a longtime regulator. She's had a lot of big, important jobs. She knows what she's doing. I think the two of them are sort of 
Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know them well personally, but I think they are sort of two peas in a pod. I think they're friends and I think they are, you know, ideologically compatible. So I, I think the commission will, will be well led in the near term. What this will do, it will create, um, you know, there will only be four commissioners and, and two appointed, two sort of Democratic leaning and two Republican leaning that won't affect enforcement actions very much. The approval for those, I think those are largely approved unanimously, although, although at times there can be close votes. But it will affect some rulemakings and it could, it could, log, it could um, create a logjam on, um, on some rulemakings in the, in the near term. It's much easier for the commission to proceed with a full, a full slate so that the votes can be 3-2 instead of 2-2. Two two. Yeah. Again, that was David Smith of Katie Bar the Door. For more of his insight, be sure to visit katiebarthedoor.com, C-A-D-Y-B-A-R-T-H-E-D-O-O-R.com. It's an excellent publication, so be sure to check that out. And of course, for more curated commentary from the LexBlog Network's thousands of authors, visit us at lxbn.com. Thank you, David. Thank you, Colin.